Hi guys, we'll have a look in this video at the new air quality sensor from IKEA called Vindrichting. This is a 2.5 pm sensor. The pm 2.5 means particulate matter 2.5, which refer to tiny particles or droplets in the air that are 2.5 microns or less in width. Particulate matter or PM is a mixture of solid and liquid particles that are suspended in the air. The PM25 is used to describe pollutant levels both indoors and outdoors where the health impact from exposure considers amount of PM25 over a period of 24 hours. Most studies indicate PM25 at or below 12 micrograms per cubic meters is considered healthy or with little to no risk from exposure. If the level goes to or above 35 micrograms per cubic meter during a period of 24 hours, the air is considered unhealthy and can cause issues for people with existing breathing issues like asthma. Prolonged exposure to the level above 50 micrograms per cubic meter can lead to serious health issues or mortality. I have, as you can see, we have two sensors just for science. We'll see in a minute why. One of them, on one of them, the only modification I've made is the adding of the ESP8266 so that we can read the values in Home Assistant. On the other one, beside of the ESP8266, I also added a millimeter wave sensor 2410 a BME 280 for the temperature, humidity and air pressure as a BH1750 as an illuminance sensor and I modified the fan from running from the standard 5 volts I drop it to the 3.3 volts in order to re reduce noise Usually the fan is powered by 5 volts and during the day you can barely hear it but during the night it makes a lot of noise it's like a very annoying whining noise Lowering the voltage to 3.3 you can still hear it if you are very very close to it but during the night at a normal distance you can't hear it anymore so we'll jump now to the computer and we'll have a look at the values. We'll see how the modify and unmodify uh, compared, if the values changed or not. And we compare the value as well with the values from the air purifier from Xiaomi 3H. But before that, let's have a look on of the millimeter wave 2410 somebody asked me in a previous video uh, how well the 2410 detects static energy so let's have a look so to test the millimeter wave we'll be using the HLK radar tool this is the the tool from Hylink uh, that connects via Bluetooth with the millimeter wave sensor itself and displays a lot of information. So we'll see here better than Home Assistant all the values. So we'll have a sensor around. Let's click on it. Engineering mode is uh, detected. So I'm sitting about a meter and a half, two meters away from the sensor. And we, if you look at the second graph in here, it detects energy, static energy, at around 2 meters. If I'm moving away from the radar, it 
now I went away from it you can see that it's not detecting any more movement the moving target is still detecting something very very close and this is the fan inside from the PM 2.5 but you set the target to 50 and you don't have any problem if I'm going back to the sofa you can see immediately it detects me I'm gonna try to stay without moving for a couple of seconds a minute see what happens it does a really good job job uh, detecting objects uh, moving targets or static targets but as long as you are at a reasonable distance so although it detects up to six meters the accuracy of the static target it's only at about two three meters maximum so you see it, it has absolutely no problem detecting movement moving targets it doesn't detect anything because I'm not actually moving that much but static target it, it actually detects me breathing around so as long as you stay in front of it at a couple of meters distance you will have no problem let me go back a meter and see what happens I'm now at about four or five meters and you can see already the accuracy of the static target is not as great as before I think if I stay quiet in here you see actually gone green it doesn't detect any movement you could lower the the sensibility lower it a little more and hopefully you, it does the job for you but uh, you want to have it at about Two, three meter tops for static targets for moving targets it has absolutely no problem detecting up to like seven meters you see I'm at about two meters and absolutely no problem I can stay here all day you will detect me immediately now if you click on more in here you can change the ranges you can change the distance between triggers you can either set it to 0 0.2 or 0 0.75 number of detection points which are these eight points in here and uh, I think this is the seconds unattended seconds now this distance between triggers refers to if you have a look in here refers to the distance between each of these detection points so at zero is you can set the energy at the uh, 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 movement energy or you can set uh, the energy of motionless then because it's set to 0 0.75 the next step is between 0 and 0 0.75 if you set it to 0 0.2 it will be between 0 and 0 0.2 and then you will be instead of 0 0.75 1.5 you will be 0 0.2 0 0.4 and so on this way you lower the distance of detection uh, with the latest uh, version of app you have a button in here where you can check how the sensor behave if there's nobody around or 
with the usual stuff around say you have uh, like a fan or something you can set five seconds and five seconds and it will show you the values for each of the eight steps when is nobody around you see so you can you can you can move away from the sensor and you can run a test and this way you will see uh, how can you set up the sensor so it doesn't detect uh, it doesn't give you any false positives you can and baut rate you can change the baut rate you can change all the settings once by choosing in here if you don't want to change them manually on more versions there is a new version the 2.04 which activates the illuminance sensor onto the sensor itself but is a beta version so we'll stick with the normal one so you see it's still detecting me like i said at about two meters two three meters it has absolutely no problem further than the three meters i think uh, i think is not as great but anyway i think it does even a better job than the df robot one and with the app the app is really nice you can use the app to to configure it the way you want and if you use the app then in home assistant the only thing you need you need the gpio for the detection that's all you need you don't need any settings so you see it's still detecting me so i'm gonna stop this now let's jump to the computer and we'll have a look at the value from the pm 2.5 sensors and how they compare okay so we are now on the computer we have in here the three sensors we have the xiaomi we have the ikea sensor with the five volts and we have the ikea sensor with the 3.3 volts as you can see the values are more or less the same this is in real time the one with the 5 volts one, which is this one, is reporting 0 now. The second sensor is the 3.3 volts one, which is reporting 0 micrograms per cubic meter and the, IQ, the Xiaomi one is reporting 3 micrograms per cubic meter now if we remove the maximum and the minimum minimum maximum maximum minimum okay now these are the values you see we set the the blue one is the Xiaomi one, the purple one is the 5 volts one and the green one is the 3.3 volts one. As you can see it's just a little bit below the Xiaomi if we adding as well the maximum let's add maximum as well at all of them maximum maximum and maximum now you see the 5 volts one sometimes it just spikes a lot more than the other ones you see the Xiaomi one 
you see this is like 71 at this point and this was a hundred and eleven and this was 47 so sometimes it just spikes a lot more I think I think with the 3.3 .3 volts one we get a reasonable reading maybe if I bump the the voltage to like 4 volts it will be a lot closer to the Xiaomi one but still I mean if you look in real time now 0, 0 and 3 so I think the 3.3 .3 volts it does a very good job as we can see this is the Xiaomi this is the 3.3 volt version and this is the 5 you see almost the same but yeah 5 volts is obviously over the limit you can see is a lot over the limit over the Xiaomi one and over the 3 volts one the Xiaomi one and then the other one just a little bit below so I'm gonna try to push the voltage to 4 volts I'm gonna get the voltage regulator and power it to 4 volts and see how the noise is in the meantime, let's open up the modified version of the IKEA sensor and see what I've done inside. Hi guys, so let's have a look now inside of the IKEA sensor. To open up the sensor, on the back of the unit we have four Phillips screws. Open it carefully. Let's disconnect the cables and we have a look in a minute. Okay, so this is, let's remove that as well, this little cable, so this is my version of the IKEA sensor modification, let's have a look bit by bit, on this side you have the sensor itself with the fan, this is just the standard that it comes, this is how it comes. You've got two cables in here you've got this is the sensor cable and this is the fan cable sensor connects with to the, this gst connector in here and the fan connects to this this is powered by five volts uh, on the top of the board let me zoom a little bit we have 
these test points which are marked we also have like a GST connector that is not being connected these test points correspond with this connector in here so you can either connect like I have did to these test points in here or you can get one of these GST connector place it in here and you can use a cable this is just a 2.5 millimeter 5 pin connector now if you do connect to the test points you notice you have one two three four five test points you only need the first two with the one the first one is five volts then you got ground then the fourth one is marked R E S T rest this is the pin for the data from the sensor so from the 5 volts uh, test point you connect the cable to the 5 volts of the mini d1 and from the ground to the ground pin of the mini d1 with these two what you do you power up the mini d1 so you don't have to use the micro usb or the usb c connector you can use the power from this usb c of the ikea board so with these two you power up the mini d1 then the fourth connector the fourth test point is marked rest r e s t now this is the data from the uh, header from the ikea uh, pm 2.5 now connect this to the rx pin of the mini d1 which is gpio1 Now, in my case, I've got it connected to the GPIO 12 or the pin D6 on the Mini D1. Just in case I want to use something else like a millimeter wave or any other what uh, device. So you only need basically to get the data from the PM 2.5. All you need is to connect this rest pin to the Mini D1. You can basically connect it to any pin. Or you can connect it to the RX pin, the receiving pin, or GPIO1 on a mini D1. This would be the usual connector. In my case, I've got it connected to the GPIO12 or D6, just in case I want to use another WART device, like a millimeter wave. So with this modification, all you do, you get you power up the mini D1 and you get the data from the sensor now what else i've done i've glued in here with a little bit of hot glue a millimeter wave 2410 i attach a gst connector a five pin gst connector and uh, i know you can buy the kit somebody was saying on another video that you can get this board with the pins you can get this board with the pins, but it's not a GST connector. I recommend buying the bare board without the, the pins and just get the GST connector like this one, 2.5 millimeter five pin and just solder it. It's much easier than trying to uh, remove the header that it comes with and then solder this one. So. I've got a GST 5 pin header in here, 2.5 millimeter. I glue this in place. And from here, we are using this cable. We're using this cable to attach it. Now, how this connects? You've got the first pin, which is the VIN pin 
this connects to the 5 volts on to the mini D1 and the second pin is the ground pin so these two will power up the board the third pin is the TX pin this connects to the RX pin on the mini D1 which is GPIO1 sometime marked TX the next pin is the TX pin this connects to the RX pin on the mini D1 which is GPIO3 and the last pin is the out pin this uh, uh, this pin will output a signal when motion or motionless or energy is detected so in my case although I attach all the cables to the mini D1 I'm only using into the configuration the out pin since this is a Bluetooth board like we've seen before you can set it up to, via Bluetooth and then just use the out pin to get the data from the, the sensor when motion is detected so in my case I'm only using uh, the out pin now what else we've done we modified the fan header now this header this is for the fan this is connected ground and 5 volts now this fan is controlled by the controller on the sensor and you will stop and you will start at certain points to get a reading to get a sample now the control is done via the ground pin not via the 5 volts pin so what I've done is if you notice in here we have another set of test points the first two of them are marked fan plus and fan minus now the fan plus is going to the plus of the header the minus fan minus it goes to the ground or the minus or the header we do not want to use the plus because this will be 5 volts we want to lower it I lower it to 3.3 so the plus will connect to the 3.3 volts on the mini D1 so we can use the 3.3 regulation of the mini D1 to power it and the ground it connects you can connect it in here but it's a lot harder to solder the cable in here than to solder the cable in here so solder a cable from the fan minus of this test point in here to a two pin GST connector you can cut the cable you can cut this cable if you want and solder the pins directly I decided just to add the header they are cheap so two pin 2.5 millimeter GST connector the plus goes to the 3.3 volts on the mini on the mini d1 the minus goes to the fan minus this way you lower the speed of the fan so it's not that noisy and you get the, the same regulation like before since it is done by the ground pin now the reading with the 3.3 volts are a lot closer to the xiaomi uh, purifier than the reading from the 5 volts with the 5 volts one I've noticed they are a bit higher than the Xiaomi one and another modification I've made I added a couple more sensors so I've got this project board which I cut to size I sold the two sensors in here I sold a BH 1750 which is this one and I soldered a BME 280 the 1750 is an illuminance sensor detects the lux of the or, or the light in the room and the BME 280 is a pressure uh, humidity and temperature sensor now these are soldered together in a daisy chain and then from here I've got a 4 pin GST 2.5 millimeter female and we've got 
the first pin on the right is the VCC pin and this connects to the 3.3 volts on the Mini D1. The second pin is the ground pin, this connects to the ground pin on the Mini D1. These sensors will work between 2.5 I think and 5 volts so you can connect it to the 5 volts with no problem but I've connected to the 3.3 the next pin is the SDA pin or the data pin this will connect to pin D2 or GPIO4 on the Mini D1 and the last pin which is the SCL pin this is the clock pin Disconnect to D1 or GPIO 5 on a Mini D1. Now I think I forgot about the out pin of the 2410. The out pin, the last pin on the 2410. Uh, this pin will connect to the Mini D1 on the D0 or GPIO 16. In my case, you can connect this to any pin. So. Once we've got this in here, and once we've modified the header for the fan, and once we have this in here, all we have to do now is put it back together. To put it back together, the cable for the millimeter wave goes under the board. Now in here, there's nothing. On the board on the other side of this board so this cable goes in here so it doesn't get damaged or squashed now this goes in here you see perfect now then we take the mini d1 the mini d1 will fit in here perfectly it's like they meant for this mini d1 to go in here now the best way is like this with the connector this way you see it just slides in there you see perfect it's beautiful this goes in there now in here i've cut a little bit this plastic you see i make a little channel in here so you can fit these cables this goes to the front sensors now these sensors they have the cabling we can connect this you can solder this directly to the board but in case i glue this permanently in here i decided to just leave it as it is for now now this for time being what we do Take a little bit of tape and this in there like that. Now we need the fan connector not to the 5 volts one to the 3.3 one so the fan connector goes in here and then we have this sensor connector this uh, through this connector the main controller board will get the data from the PM 2.5 sensor. Once we have all in place, make sure the cables are not in the middle. You see, with no pressure, no problem. Now, what we have to do now is put the screws back. Okay, don't tie them up yet, just a little bit. The other one on the other corner. Okay. Let's put the last one. And we have one more.
now you can tie them up a little bit there's no need to over tie them it's not like it's gonna go anyway so this is it let's power it up and see if it's still working hopefully it does is very very easy to modify it does work really really well and uh, we'll have a look in a minute at the software side of the the sensor okay so i've just connected the sensor back to the power cable let's have a look see if it's back online if it's still working okay so we've get we've got all the data in here the sensor was fine now let's go back to the codes and have a look is this one now the first bit the Wi-Fi you can leave the I this bit in here the manual IP address out you can delete this or if you wanna use static IP addresses like me you have to add this manual IP a bit now this would be depends on your network usually 192.168.0 something or 192.168.1 something this is the fallback hotspot in case the you change the Wi-Fi the mini D1 will create a Wi-Fi uh, access point with this name and this password which allows you to reconnect to the Wi-Fi this is the login bit uh, I set the debug just so we can see how it gets the information uh, usually I set this to none uh, I notice it gives less problem API and OTA we need this now on substitutions we give the sensor a name uh, this is the information that uh, we give to the sensor ESP home now this is the name and model of the board we're using uh, if you want the to create an, an entity with the name you created in here and also add the part of the MAC address in the end you can set this to true this is helpful in case you want to use the same script to, to flash multiple cards if you do this you might want to remove the IP address otherwise you'll have a bunch of uh, cards with the same IP address so if you set this to true make sure you delete this manual IP bit the web server this creates a small basic website with the server information we'll see this in a bit the i2c this is the bit where we set the pins for the sda and scl that we're using for the uh, temperature humidity and illuminance sensor now let's start declaring the sensor this is the ikea sensor as you see it's using a PM1006 you can give it whatever name you want in here ah, also on the word bit uh, you declare the RX pin this is the receiving pin on the mini D1 and this here connects to the transmitting pin on the IKEA board as we've seen on the other video the baud rate is 9600 now we declare the illuminance sensor we declare the BME 280 and in here this is the only codes that I used for the uh, millimeter wave like I've said because it's a Bluetooth device and you can configure it via Bluetooth and because even if you reset the sensor you will still remember the values 
the only bit, the only code, the only pin I've used is the out pin on the 2410 which connects to the D0 or GPIO 16 on the Mini D1. Now this is all the codes you need. If you only use the IKEA one, all you need is uh, to add this and this. That's all. That's all you need to add, these, these lines in here. Once you do that, if you go to settings, then device and services, it should detect automatically that you've got another device on the network. If it doesn't, just add an integration. ESP Home, add the IP address you set it earlier, the port is 6053 and submit, it should detect it and it should give you this information. Humidity, air pressure, temperature, illuminance, the GPIO is clear. Let me walk in front of the sensor a little bit, see if it detects me. Yeah, so as you can see, works fine. And this is the PM 2.5. We've got the firmware up to date. I also added uh, some diagnostic lines in here so we can see that it's connected to the Wi Fi. What IP address, the signal, and how long it's been connected. And in here, we have the uh, basic information like device name, type of board, and if you if you created the mini website, if you click in here, it will open you the website that it creates for the sensor, where you have the humidity, the same information, but on a website you can basically just open this in a browser. You don't have to use it through Home Assistant, and it does the same information. If you enable the log in you will have in here the data as it's changing you see if you set it to none this will be just black so this is all about the ikea sensor if you do like the video if you find it useful please like and subscribe and leave a comment in below thank you very much